The financial stability of a company can be tested in many ways. One of the quickest ways to see just how well a company is performing is to use financial ratios. In this lesson, you will learn what debt management ratios are, how to calculate them, and how to interpret them. The five major categories of ratio analysis, namely liquidity, debt management, asset management, profitability, and market value ratios. The debt management ratio is a computation that is used to measure a company's ability to pay its long-term debt obligations. Some common ratios are payables turnover, age of payables, debt to asset, debt to equity, and times interest earned. For the payables turnover, this represents the number of times the company pays its accounts payable during a period. This ratio helps creditors analyze the liquidity of a company by gauging how easily a company can pay off its current suppliers and vendors. The formula is calculated by dividing the total purchases or cost of goods sold by the average accounts payable for the year. For example, Company A has cost of goods sold worth of $1 million, beginning accounts payable of $55,000, ending accounts payable of $958,000. To get the payables turnover, we just simply divide 1 million over the average of the beginning and ending accounts payable. Payables turnover is now 1.97 expressed in times. This means that company A pays his suppliers back on average once every 6 months of twice a year, or 1.97 times per period. Keep in mind that higher ratio shows to suppliers and creditors that the company pays its bills frequently and regularly. It also implies that new vendors will get paid back quickly. Also, a high turnover ratio can be used to negotiate favorable credit terms in the future. Next is the age of payables. This measures the average number of days spent before paying obligations to suppliers. The formula is 365 days or 360 days depending on the company over payables turnover. For example, company A has a payables turnover of 1.97 times. To get the age of payables, just simply divide 365 by 1.97. We then get an age of payables of 187, 185 days. This means that the company takes 185 days before they can pay their obligations. The longer they take to pay their creditors, the more money the company has on hand, which is good for working capital and free cash flow. But if the company takes too long to pay its creditors, the creditors may be unhappy and may refuse to extend credit in the future, or they may offer less favorable terms. Next is the debt-to-asset ratio. This ratio shows you how much of your asset base is financed with debt. This enables comparisons of leverage to be made across different companies. The formula is divide total liabilities by its total assets. For example, Company A has a total assets of 3373, current liabilities of 543, and long-term debts of 531. To get the total liabilities, simply add current liabilities and long-term debts, and divide it by 3373 or the total assets. Our debt-to-assets ratio will be 31.84%, which means 31.84% of the firm's assets are purchased with debt. As a result, 68.16% of the firm's assets are financed with equity or investor funds. The higher the ratio, the higher the degree of leverage, and consequently, financial risk. One shortcoming of this ratio is that it does not provide any indication of asset quality since lumps of, lumps of tangible and intangible assets are combined together. Next is the debt to equity ratio. Since a business is either financed by debt or equity or maybe the combination of two, the debt to equity ratio measures how much debt is used to finance the company in relation to the amount of equity used. Using debt financing is riskier for the company than using equity financing. As the proportion of debt financing goes up, the risk of the firm also goes up. That's why calculating this ratio is important, particularly to the owners of the firm. To calculate, 
just divide total liabilities over the total stockholders' equity. For example, Company A has a total equity of 2,299, current liabilities of 543, and long-term debts of 531. To calculate the debt to equity, just divide the sum of 543 and 531 over total equity of 229. This gives us a debt to equity of 46.72%. This means that 46.72% of the firm's capital structure is debt and that the remainder is supplied by investor capital. As the proportion of debt financing goes up, the risk of the firm also goes up. A debt to equity ratio of more than one implies that the company is a leveraged firm. Less than one implies that it is a conservative one. Lastly, times interest earned. This is another debt or financial lever leverage ratio, which is important to calculate for a company as it measures the number of times interest expense is converted to income and if the company can pay its interest expense using the profits generated. If the firm uses debt financing, it has to be able to pay its interest expense. To compute TIE, just divide operating income or EBIT or earnings before interest and tax all over the interest expense. For example, Company A has an EBIT of 691 and an interest expense of 141. Just divide 691 by 141 and we will get 4.9 times. This means that the company can meet its interest expenses 4.9 times over each year. Usually, if a firm has high debt ratio, then the times interest earned ratio is usually low since it would be more difficult to pay its interest expenses if it has a lot of debt. On the other hand, if the company's debt ratios are low, then the, the TIE or the times interest earned ratio would be high as it would be easier to cover the company's interest expenses. Again, the debt management ratio focuses on the firm's ability to meet its long-term debt obligation. These ratios are payables turnover, age of payables, debt to asset, debt to equity, and times interest earned.